And we are live. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am one of your hosts, Blake Rafino. Alongside me is my counterpart, Joe DeLeon. Good evening. Good sir. Do you just like wake up certain days and choose to antagonize me the way that you were today on Twitter with some of the things you were saying to me? Is that, is that what this but is? I, this but this here's was? the thing, though. Even though I'm somewhat plain to piss you off. Yes. The truth is, I do believe, I, I actually do believe what I'm saying. The Caleb Williams stuff, I can understand why some would like him less than than other quarterbacks. But the the statement you made about Malik Neighbors, I can't get behind. I, I'm not trying to start an argument before the show. Name the first, first round running. corner that Marvin Harrison Jr. demolished. The, the like. argument, wait, wait, the argument you made was that Malik Neighbors is more well rounded. That's just that's not true. Marvin Harrison is, Jr. is the more well rounded. Hey, He's I'm glad more, you brought this up. I'm, what makes Malik I, Neighbors? I, wait, wait. Hold on, we have an intern now. Hold on, hold on one second. Is Ben your intern? No. Can you give me that? Thank you. All right, Joe. Can I can I read you something off here? Uh-oh. Go ahead, read it. Read it. Guess who has more yards after contact? More catches inside of a tight zone. Guess who has more catches in traffic? Guess who has more total touchdowns in their career? More total yards in their career? More uh, a total uh, uh, yards run without receiving a catch? Guess who has everything besides, or guess who is better at one area, all statistically, than the other? I don't disagree. It's obviously Malik Neighbors. Okay. I, I don't disagree. And what I have propped up Malik Neighbors for, who is my wide receiver too and one of my highest ranked prospects, he is the most electric player after the catch. And all those stats that you just brought up, I, I think are perfect examples of that. By the but way, Mark, if you took six games away from Malik Neighbors this year and you could take all six of the highest yak yardage, if you took the six lotus y- lowest yak yardage from him this year, he still be- beats Marvin Harrison Jr. By the way, yeah, because that's his game. He almost doubles it. So my, that, my that's is, his game. I, when people say, "Oh, that, oh, you can't have Malik Neighbors ahead of Marvin Harrison Jr.," it's it's more of a tick and tack than people are giving it credit for. By the way, he's the same height, the same weight, and runs the same damn forty as Jamar Chase. By the way, they come from the same school. By the way, they almost had the same exact yak yardage. What are we what are we discussing here? Okay, but the the thing that makes these two guys very different is that Marvin Harrison Jr. is six foot four and moves like he's five foot eleven. And Malik he Neighbors got put is, on a stretcher because he couldn't get open versus Georgia. He got Malik okay, Sears he got Malik blasted. Malik okay, Marvin Harrison Jr. Here's, here's a common opponent that they had. They played Georgia. Marvin Harrison Jr. was legitimately taken he got knocked out, of, out of the game. He got knocked oh, out he of wasn't, the game. Joe, he, he wasn't doing good before that. I beg to differ. Well, he didn't he, he didn't put up what Malik did. Uh Marvin Harrison Jr. had five receptions for 106 yards and two touchdowns. And then now he got do, knocked okay. out of the game. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Now do Malik. Oh, like, I'm pulling. I'm pulling it up right now, which was fifty to thirty. By the way, if if you needed a quick reminder of what the no one likes score you. that game was, no one likes you. Five receptions for 128 yards and one touchdown. All he had was more receiving yards. Hold on. The same number hold of receptions on. Hold in hold a on. full game, and Marvin Harris Jr. had more hold touchdowns. Hold on, hold on. Which guy in that game had a backup quarterback? Oh. I rest no, my game no, longer. no, Here's no! You can't just keep. Running. You're just moving. Keep moving the goalposts. Whatever. Just get into the topics. We're not doing <laughs> this. <laughs> you know you love me. All right, uh-huh. Joe. A big thing here that I think is it. Well, we got to talk about. It's being evaluated by the NCAA and commissioners. Is this new absolutely Rudy Poo kickoff? If you don't know, if you if you've seen the XFL. That's what the NFL is uh, 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 is going to be going to. The college football ranks has said that they're moving. They want to monitor before moving to that. Yeah, shocking. Progressive specialist Joe likes this new rule. I'm not going to share my opinion on it just yet. But I will say I found it very funny and interesting that literally the same day, like typically when there's rule changes possible for the college game that they're trying to reflect with the NFL, it's a little bit more of a slow burn. 
literally the same day, hours later, there was immediately an article put out by NBC and other outlets saying the, the college game is going to study this and then make a decision on if they want to implement it or not. So they're being aggressive in, in making these changes to the game. Can I give you a hot take before we get to it? Sure. If I don't want somebody to return, I'll, I'm going to kick it out of the end zone. But it's not it's not about limiting the amount of returns. It's actually going to increase the amount of returns. It, but I, I actually completely disagree with that. Why? I can, because the, you can do that in the XFL when guys aren't able to kick it consistently in the back of the end zone. Okay? The problem, and we'll get to this, if I don't want to return, I'm just going to tell my guy, kick it out of the back of the end zone. And by the way, it takes a massive thing out of the game. You want me to tell you what it is? Joe, I'm old enough to remember where my team, this New Orleans Saints, started a half with a with an onside kick, okay, and received the ball. Why would you do something so stupid? All right, well, I'll wait to – I don't want to build up this argument before we get into it, but I, I – we have varying opinions. I think that this increases the chance that we have more kickoff returns. And I think that ultimately it's going to uh, limit the amount of serious injuries and probably the most dangerous play in football is going to be taken out of the equation. Like this so, was more important than the hip drop shit. This was way more important. I The hip drop thing shouldn't have happened and we don't need to get into that. Okay. This was more important than the hip drop thing because you can't take those tackles out of the game. It's impossible. You you can't, but my arg again, we'll we'll just we'll get into it. Okay. Prince Human Yellen from Ole Miss, the former Florida Gator, has some very choice words about his former team. Um, Joe, I gotta tell you something. It's not Prince Human Yellen related right now. Ole Miss better win, and they better win big. Because all that shit talking that you're doing mm. right now, Lane Kiffin included, you let me tell you something. You want to talk that shit, you better back it up. That's all I got to say. That's not where I thought you were going to go with this. That's actually a really interesting angle. I'm, I'm excited to get into that segment because that's a great point. They have talked the most smack and made the most noise out of any team this whole offseason. That's a Anybody. really great point. Yeah, it's, it's, not even, it's not even remotely close. They're really talented. They're really well coached. But Lane Kiffin saying, you know, in the same day at the same press conference, saying to the media that I now I got a cheat code. Y'all messed up. All right, buddy. Okay, you better not lose a fucking game. Mm. Sometimes, sometimes, Joe, and I've learned this the hard way in my 30, 40 years of, of life. Coming up on 34 years. Mother karma is a B. Okay, I'm just I'm just going to say that. So we'll talk about that. Also, Joe, the NCAA uh, fails to do an appeal for the Tennessee and Virginia case. We'll touch into that a little bit. But Charlie Baker, the NCAA president, is trying to push banning prop bets and the lading sports betting scandal. Can I give you another hot take? Yep. Let's hear I don't know if I I don't know if I disagree with him. So you're uh, saying you do disagree with him? I mean, I don't know if I well, no, I I don't no, I don't you agree disagree. with him. You agree with him. I don't know. I I, I feel like in my heart a lot heart, of double negatives. You, you yeah, do agree with him. Fault. That's my my mom was an English teacher. How stupid am I? <laughs> um I, I feel like I lean a little bit to agreeing with him. Because I, I do too. I, I, mean, I do think that he's he made a valid, valid point in reference to, well, hey, I, I mean, if you just do money line, you do the point spread, you don't do the prop bets, you're not giving an incentive to players that that can't be caught and that are that are betting that they tank a game. I, I do think that there's a lot to be to be shown in this, and he gave some data behind it that I thought was very interesting. Yeah, and I would actually go as far as to say, and I'm going to bring this up later on in the show, I really think that the other commissioners of these leagues need to back him. 
I, I think I that there agree. needs to be a movement. We need to stop just because these leagues have other these betting companies, you know, they're they're hand in hand and they have relationships with them doesn't mean that they, you know, need to cower away from something like this. There needs to be changes in order for sports betting to stay as prominent as it is. The bad thing about this though is that the it, it's it's awful for the fans. It's all for it's all for, for the business. I mean, they why can't a gambling company do a prop bet? I mean, it's not fair to the fan. It's not fair to the um, the like Caesars or FanDuel or Bet Online. So it's just not fair to them. Yeah, it ruins the experience for the fan. But at the same time, I'd much rather have the integrity never be questioned. You know, and I and it seems like the ones who have violated this I are still usually they- shitty players. Oh. No, I was just going to say they're usually bad players, and that's, you know, the thankfully it's, you know, we don't have Patrick Mahomes or Carson Beck doing this. It's always some backup bench player who doesn't really contribute very much or maybe he's having a down. You mean year. like Shohei Ot- Otani? <laughs> well, Shohei didn't bet on himself. You don't know that. It's a good point. It's a good point. A lot of things can get lost in translation, do you oh, see what geez. I did there? Hit you the see break. What I did there? <laughs> Go to the break. You see what I did there? That is what you call a father of two making a dad joke. Okay, that was a hell of a dad. That joke. was the worst joke that you've ever made. You there have been so many. That's what she said. There's been so many pauses. There's been a lot of bad dad jokes on this show. That's the worst one. Really? I don't even think it's close. <laughs> Man, I was preparing for that one all day. I'm kind of that's I, disappointing. That's really I know because I, I think it's really funny. <laughs> if you in the chat thought it was funny, give us a thumbs up. If you thought it was bad, okay, of course, the 40 year olds in the chat are going to agree with you that I, you know, th- there's not many in my age demographic that tune into this show. So, of course, they're going to agree with you. One day you will learn to, uh, uh, Enjoy jokes like that, okay? Okay. okay. All right. Let's talk about our good friends over at betonline.ag. Everybody do us a favor by hitting the like and share. Share all those social media groups. If you're on Facebook, if you're watching us, listening to us on YouTube, like, subscribe, notification bell, wherever you listen to podcasts, rate, review, and subscribe. Joe, I'm already – my mom, you know, like <laughs> my mother gave me a thumbs up. I don't know who this is, though. AE gave me a thumbs up. Your bot account. Uh, Chris H gave me a thumbs up. Your, See, your other other bot account. I don't have bot accounts. Uh huh. Okay. Is what it is. Let's talk about good friends at Bet Online. We we talk about the new kickoff rule next. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way for you to wager on all of your favorite sports contest events with the first to market odds and lines. Find reviews for all the news for each league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, college sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports information for live, in game betting, props, and futures. Head on over to Bet Online today and use your mobile device to join and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code BELIEVE50, that's BELIEVE50, B-L-E-A-V-5-0, to receive your 50% off welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's betonline.ag, betonline.ag. We're back! All right. Let's get this thing rolling. Joe, in your career, you, and at least on the show for sure, you were a specialist. So you were a long snapper. So the topic that we lead tonight's show off with is about special teams and what college football is monitoring. Now, this does, again, and something that ties yet again into the NFL, that college football is monitoring this XFL and the NFL kickoff rule. Now, if you don't uh, know what it is, just go watch a kickoff from the XFL, basically, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong here, but the kicker kicks off at the same yard line that they normally do, but the defenders line up at, what, the 35, and they got to yeah. yards apart, and then once the ball is caught, then the defenders can start running to make the tackle. 
So your thoughts on the new kickoff rule? Yeah, um, as you just talked about there, this is eliminating what has been this long-standing play in football where you have one team run full speed at the other catching guys. You know, you're building wedges, you're trying to build blocks in order to set up a return and in order to break those those wedges, you have guys running full speed. I remember back when I was playing that you'd have guys called wedge breakers right. as just a title wedge position. Busters. You'd wedge also busters. you'd also go as far as to say there's usually a guy called a headhunter who would run down and try to slip his way and completely blow up blocks or or try to track right. down the ball. The very aggressive naming for these things because of the crazy nature of the play. You usually put the craziest SOBs that you had on a team on these kickoff plays. This rule for me, I think, opens up and changes the approach to special teams where it's going to be a little bit more, a little bit more of an opportunity to just use offensive linemen, tight ends, linebackers, defensive ends to be the ones that are doing the blocking that are a bit more built to be more physical and you're not needing guys to run at one another at full speed. We did get comments from Kirby Smart on this who said that I think that the NFL is the model. They know what they want. They know what they're trying to do. And then one thing I found very interesting, in 2023, 49.6% per of kickoffs at the FBS level were returned. And there are, for the most part, they're fair catches. They are touchbacks. They're usually kicks that are not returned for the most part. That's actually not true. You got to go look at that stat because I got it right here too. Did What's you know that 49% is an equal to a fair catch is actually technically they use that as a return. I had to go look it up. So the number is even lower than the amount that they're No, returning. no, no. The, the number of touchbacks is even higher. Believe it or not, I pulled this up from the NFL. Are you ready? Okay. 77 uh, 77.2% of touchbacks happened in the NFL a year ago. Okay? Of the, of the 20%-ish, okay, 18%, but of the about 20% of, of kicks that were returned, Joe, did you know that 18% of that 20 were returned from the end zone? I understand you're trying to do something that is going to help players' health reasons. But, Joe, here's my point and why I disagree with this. 80% of the kicks are going out of the back of the end zone. Okay, I understand that there's certainly kickers in the NFL game that are kicking it out of the back of the end zone. I don't know if that with this implementation and there hasn't been any direct indication of this, that there is some sort of encouragement or restriction that you can't kick it out of the back of the end zone. I don't know about that, but most college kickers are not doing that. Most college kickers are That's not. Fair. Most of them are fair catching it and taking the fair catch, which puts the ball on the 25 yard line. I would assume that if you implement a rule like this, that you are then going to take away the ability to get that touchback. I would like for more returns, and I would like to enable this ability to limit the amount of serious injuries that come out of it. There, there, I don't know what the percentage is. There's not really a high number of volume that's really covered because more often than not, it's players that are backups, third-string players, walk-ons that aren't going to get publicized. If a guy goes down with a head injury, he just gets swapped out and we don't even talk about it. It doesn't really impact the success of a team. But I like the fact that we're going to get more returns. And I got juiced up by seeing that one reverse that was created by that XFL team that called it, where they took advantage of the short field and they were able to get a big return out of it. I think that if you give creative college special teams coordinators, creative NFL special teams coordinators, you can now create in the short area of field more fakes. You can create more big explosive plays on these returns. And I think it makes the game more fun. I really do. I don't think this is a detriment at all to the game. When are we going to give defenders a little bit of, of, of something? That's that not going to happen. Okay. When are we going to do it? We're already too far gone. I mean, we're way past that. Doesn't mean that we don't need to continue to call it out and try. By the way, they got to vote on this in the NFL again next year. This is not set in stone. Yeah. They will change it back if they need to. 
Here's another thing. Joe, what if I want to do a surprise onside kick? Well, that you can't do anymore. Okay. I mean, so, okay, but how how often though do teams I've actually seen, I, ever do this? Okay, I'm glad you asked. I saw Nick Saban win a national title by doing it. I also so I also saw my Saints do it and win a Super Bowl in doing it. Don't tell me that it doesn't affect games when we've seen national titles, games on the line be affected by a surprise onside kick. Do not tell me that I've my own team won a Super Bowl off of it. Well, I would actually argue that there's potential for more creativity by the kicking team as well. Because they can't you move. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I guess yeah, you can't move until it's caught. Never mind. Yeah, I mean, look, that is obviously the only drawback of all this is that it's you have to eliminate the only that drawback. play. It's not the only drawback. It's the primary drawback. You lose that play. No. Joe, if there are if there is more returns, hypothetically, which I still don't believe that there will be, if there are more returns, but you know why I don't think that there's going to be more returns? Because I think that it gives a benefit to the the uh, uh, return man. Okay, if I'm a coach and you now have a bigger advantage to return it, yet I have a kicker that can kick it out of the back of the end zone. Why would I even remotely take that chance? I, I think the opposite could happen. I think the opposite can happen where, listen, it, they might they average starting at the 30, 35 yard line with this new rule. Why would I even remotely take a chance, okay, in him getting any type of return? I, I think it's a detriment to the game because and, and why can't we just be traditionalists? How many dudes are legitimately getting hurt on kickoffs that aren't well, getting hurt? Joe, more, more, and I know that there's more plays, but like, I mean, you're taking away hip tackles. You're taking away so many different things to help the offender instead of the defender. I, I just, I, I can't. Why do we always Wait, but, change shit? But it's not the, it's not particularly the the concern of the amount of times that guys are sustaining serious head injuries that require them to come out of games. One of the things that they've always talked about with concussions and the long-term effects of them is less about you taking one big hit and that doing serious damage. The helmets are protective enough these days that it, it, it's going to prevent prevent a serious big hit from really, really giving you serious brain damage. The bigger problem that we see, and it's talked about a lot with offensive and defensive linemen, is the series of consistent small hits that occur that maybe don't knock you out of a game but if you're kicking off i don't know like five six times a game and you're running down on kickoff and you're getting hit and you're getting popped all those times and there's a lot of potential for head contact on those plays that are not going to get called by officials because there's so much going on that's where the concern is it's not about guys getting knocked out of games or getting serious you know injuries it's about eliminating those hits because they're unnecessary Joe, statistically it's only one play per game statistically speaking if you score five times at the 80 percent clip the 80 percent mark let's say you kick off five times that mm -hmm. means only one time there's an actual return happening yeah, but guys are still hitting each other when they're running down on kickoff sure some are but not all the time and you know that I mean, plenty of crazy MF, as I said earlier, crazy MFers right, well, run downfield and try to still hit each other. Well, you know what? Let's stop hitting players in the chest because DeMar Hamlin almost died on the field. That is a freak incident. We at least know exactly. It, this is something that's been studied. And okay. there's a reason. Well, okay, wait. Here, here's the, the biggest aspect to this is that there was deliberately changed the yard line in which – when you get a touchback where the ball is moved to in both the NFL and the college game, it was moved from the 20 to the 25. We both remember at one point when it was the 20 for player safety and it worked, but that took kickoffs out of the game. So we've already made this adjustment and it, and it, it just made special teams boring. It made an important part of the game. Very, very well, boring. Well, Joe, they're doing the same thing with punts in the NFL. You can't go and you can't run and go until it's kicked. Are we going to what are we going to do with punts? It's the same type of scenario. On no, punts, it's not. No, it's not because you're not you're not all the way downfield catching guys. You're running downfield stride for stride with players. Well, Joe, 
I've been on punt enough times to know had the close kind. Were you ever on punt? You were an offensive lineman. Yeah, yeah I was on punt. I was uh, the shield punt protector, the shield. You want to talk oh, about the... you want to talk about protecting people, okay? Bullshit. You know that guys go down the field to set up a wedge, and you and the reason that the crackback block was taken away was because of punt. There are still high impact, massive impact hits. By the way, and, and Joe, you know I love you, and you're, you're a special teams guy, so there are parts of the, what you're saying that I'm going to di- di- just digress because I do okay. think that you're right in reference to it has t- taken the kickoff away. I do think that this is an interesting way to try to bring it back. However, okay, you're playing football. Football. You're not playing table tennis. You're not playing tennis. You're not bowling. You're not playing golf. You're playing football, which even more than fighting is more of a physical sport than any sport on planet Earth. You know what? Next thing we're going to take away, how about in boxing, let's take away the fucking jab. Okay, but first of all, I I don't have things like things like this I have no problem with making these adjustments in order to make the game safer because it is a dangerous sport. We both played it. I have gotten blasted plenty of times running down on a oh. punt, completely, you know, completely laid out, hit in the head. Every bad thing that could have happened to me on punt has happened to me. I I I think that because of the violence nature of the game we are as parents get softer and softer we're slowly seeing more elite athletes choose to play other sports and it's not something that's really heavily studied but I would like for for young men and individuals to be encouraged to want to play the game also a piece of this that I was just trying to look up that I wish I looked up beforehand that's important to bring up on the NFL website these are two very important, actually three very important pieces. Okay. If you kick short of the landing zone, which is from the 20-yard line to the end zone, the ball gets placed on the 40-yard line and is treated like an out-of-bounds kick. So if you kick it short, you mess up, the ball goes to the 40. If you kick the ball out of bounds out of the back of the end zone, or, um, no, yeah, if, if it goes out of the end zone or lands in the end zone, the ball goes to the 30. It doesn't go to the 25 anymore. So there now is an incentive by kickers to effectively place the ball in a spot where it's difficult for a returner to return it effectively. So that puts more pressure on the on the kicker, and it also puts more pressure on the returner to effectively handle the football and has less room to avoid defenders, and it also increases the chance that just in general – we are going to get more returns. That's the missing piece on this, that I think that this is better than just increasing the amount of touchbacks that occur. You're going to get the same number of touchbacks. I would hope not. I think that would be late. If I'm a special teams coordinator, I just tell my kicker to kick it kick it out of the end zone. Uh, that guy's getting fired. No, he wouldn't. That's five yards. That's That's... Field position. What was the average field position on a kickoff in the XFL? Well, that I don't know. Well, look that up and see. see I, I don't think the I, don't, I, I don't think that's like freely available information. I don't know how many people. Well, are if it tracking was freely ab- available, if you're starting off at the 35, maybe it is more beneficial for you to kick it out of the back of the end zone. Let me see if I can find it. This is why we need more interns. Uh, yeah, we need. Yeah, no, I can't find it. Mm. Funny how they leave out the most important piece. That, right. I mean, that would be a good piece of info. It would be a great piece of info. Because, Joe, if they start off at the 35-yard line, why wouldn't I kick it in the back of the end zone? I, I just I, – I think that if, if – having a good kicker who can sky a kick effectively – is going to start to become one of the most valuable pieces. No, in this they can't run until it's caught. It if doesn't you, matter anymore. Scott, okay, if you can kick the ball to the back left corner to the one yard line, that's really goddamn oh. hard to return. Okay, I, I see what you're saying, but I mean, oh boy, brother. All right, well, can let's all continue to be pansies and sew our vaginas up. <laughs> 
That's all that this is. That's such an offensive lineman take. It Well, you know why? Because every play, I'm having a 300-pound man stick his head right in my face. Every well, that's my point. Play. So just, you know, like, I mean, we're, we're – I, I – you guys, I, I mean, I get it. I get it. I, 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 I understand it. I, I got to be on. There's no more. There's no more manly positions than the offense and defensive line. None. And, and again, that's why I'm saying there's, that's such an offensive line. I, I would be willing to bet that most NFL offensive line coaches or former offensive line coaches that were in these meetings were probably saying the same thing. Yeah, I know. I talked to one. I talked to an SCO line coach today on the phone for like 30 minutes we're sitting there talking he goes i mean he cursed more than a sailor about how much he <laughs> thinks that the game's turning into p words i don't think it hurts maybe it doesn't let's see how it goes all right let's get to this next topic here joe how do we want to start this off you know it's interesting joe we've talked a lot about old miss on this show Okay, and I think the biggest thing about this is because of what they've done in the portal and our projection of them. We talk every college football team from here to kingdom come when it comes to college football. Uh, what's interesting to me is a lot of chatter is coming out of Oxford. Now, to, to, uh, yesterday, Prince Human yelling a defensive end that was from Florida transferred to Ole Miss had some words to say in a nutshell. I'll just recap it. He said, when we were at Florida, basically I was just taught to be an athlete. I wasn't taught schematics, how to do things. Now I'm being actually developed. Then the Florida fans came back out and started chomping back like the Florida Gators do and started showing videos of him not hustling, him jogging on the field like, oh, you know, here comes the pass rush. And Joe, him barely moving. What's interesting about this is I, I'm going to I'm gonna stick with this take, but I'm going to kick it to you first. If you're going to talk all this shit, you better win and you better you better do it right. You better win big. And to be honest with you, Prince Human Yellen, you better absolutely ball out when you say stuff like that. So to address the the comment that Princely Uman Yellen made, um, I know it's tough. It's probably one of the harder names to say. So Human I don't Yellen? Uman Mielin. I mean, I'm I still don't you. even. It starts with a U. Just you call him Prin Pr Princely is probably the. He's got a unique enough first name that it's kind of like Nico. You know, it's just easier to say Nico. But Princely Uman Mielin, the comment that you referenced, uh, one of the things that he also said that really caught my attention. He said, "When I was at Florida, they would just tell me go drop to this area, and I'd have to figure everything else out on my own. But there they go. Uh, but here they go into depth. I feel like I'm actually getting developed here." He was somebody who was thought to declare for the NFL draft. And I I honestly, this makes a lot of sense. I get that the Florida fans are going like, oh, here's you jogging. You know, here's you you half-assing it on the field. The biggest issue with him is that he's really raw and he's really explosive. But he looked like he had no idea what he was doing on film. And this makes sense. This is lazy. And it makes a lot of sense when you watch all of these athletic freaks that they've recruited and that they've added at Florida. No wonder none of them are developing, you know, no, no yeah, wonder they're, they're not succeeding, but imagine the production that somebody like that would have and the impact that they would have and how good their defense would be if all of those guys played cohesively together and didn't make, make mistakes. And that's why I'm saying when you make a statement like that, if you're going to make that statement, you better have more than 10 sacks this season. Well, that's the, the the next side of this that you've now brought up. There has been a lot of shit talking from Ole Miss. And oh, I, wow. I've been one of the biggest supporters of Ole Miss football. And mm -hmm. I'm going to continue to support them right now and what they're going to do in 2024. But you bring up a really good point here, man. There has been a lot of shit talking from coaches, players, and it's only going to pick up over the next few months. Well, and not only that, Joe, I mean, you got Lane Kiffin out there saying, you know, oh, the helmet and the, you know, the the radio and the helmet's a cheat code. Basically, what he was saying was, because the way that Lane talks, I have the personnel now, I have the team now, you can't stop me, nanny, nanny, boo-boo, okay? But, Joe, I'm, I'm going to stick up from Austin Armstrong here, the defensive coordinator at Florida. Joe, I, I'm, I'm going to keep this, uh, how do I want to say this? Um, I know him. 
I know him well. I call horseshit. There's no way in God's green hell that Austin Armstrong said, go to that spot and cover it. There's no, I'm telling you as somebody who knows the way that he coaches, there's no way. And by the way, okay, I understand that you're aggravated with Florida and maybe you didn't pick up on some things. You were late to football. Maybe you don't understand because you're so raw in this game, Pauls, but you're so raw in the game that you don't understand what he's trying to tell you and what to do. I call, I made one phone call today to Florida. By the way, Ron Roberts is the head coach of defense, coached at Southeastern Louisiana, was a head coach, went to multiple playoffs. I guarantee you he does not – I know – actually, I know for a fact he does not make that move if he does not believe that Austin Armstrong is one of the best, if not the best, in his mind, defensive coordinators in the SEC. My point in all of this is saying – I don't believe him. Is this – I would argue that if he's poorly coached and he is being instructed to do the things that he's describing because of how late Austin Armstrong joined the team. Like, I believe it was in the spring last year, right? He was a pretty yeah, – it was, it, was, it was later, it was but – Very I, late. I'm saying that I would blame the defensive line coach – because I, I don't disagree with you. I think Austin Armstrong's probably going to be a great DC eventually, and he's going to get better. How many times was he going out in coverage? I don't. I don't. I haven't watched the. Watched well, I the, did that, because we watched defense. Florida because we broke them down a lot. That was the game that Jane Daniels' jersey, helmet, and cleats got. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, put into the Hall of Fame. Joe, he he's rushing the passer nine point nine times out of ten. He's not if going I, out. In if I'm correct, they did fire their defensive line coach. Florida did fire and hire they a new defensive line, line coach, coach, and they fired their uh, corners coach, who's now at LSU. Yeah, Sean, but, Sean Spencer was the D line coach that they but, fired. But here's the here's the crazy thing about Sean Spencer. Where's Sean Spencer at right now? Where is he? I'm, if I'm not mistaken, he's in College Station. He's at Texas A&M. And are you going to sit here and tell me that Mike Elko doesn't know defense and he doesn't think that he's a good coach? Again, yeah, I coach. call BS. I call massive BS behind this. This is what I'm talking about. Now, listen, I have been, like you, Joe, a very massive proponent for Ole Miss. I'm also with you and agree with you that I'm probably going to continue but when you do what they did in the transfer portal, you go out and get Prince, Princely Human Yellen. You go out and you get Walter Nolan. You go out and get all these dudes, specifically on one side of the ball. You better perform, and you better perform at a, not a good level, at an elite level. Because when you start talking that shit and it backfires, John, I'm going to tell you this too. The jogging on the field, that's a pride thing for him. You can't say, oh, well, Florida fans are attacking him. That's BS. That is a pride thing. You got to have pride in yourself that you want to fire off the ball and get after the quarterback. I am not going to sit here and say that, oh, we're just going to coddle this situation in reference to what he said. Oh, he's in a better place. Sure. I think that Pete Golding, a guy that I've known for a long time, also coached at Southeastern. Great coach. And he probably is more hands-on in development and doing things. But the bottom line is I find it very asinine of a statement. By the way, it's not just the one thing for me. It was his comments and then Lane's comments that get, you know, Lane didn't really say anything wrong. He just said it's a cheat code, and he said he was pushing for it. So basically what I got the defensive side of, uh, of the ball saying and the offensive ball of the ball saying is we're about to whoop all of y'all's asses. So when it comes in August, on August 31st, you better start opening up a can of whoop ass. Because if you don't open up that can of whoop ass and you go to Baton Rouge and you lose, you got Georgia and you lose, and you have a third game, maybe Mississippi State, that game was close last year, maybe they upset you, and you go 9-3, and three, my goodness, what a what a absolute bad season that will be after the shit that you talked. By the way, I'm just going to throw this out there. Lane Kiffin also talked about the transfer portal, Joe, and how awful it was. Okay, that's fair. 
Why are there rumors about Quenchon Jukins getting back in the portal? Ah, do what? Wait, you think that he's... No, I don't think that that's going to happen. Did you think that Proctor was going back to Bama? No, that's a good point. These rumors aren't made up, Joe. When you got sitting collective members liking those tweets, they have a sitting board member of their collective liking the tweets about Quinshawn Juckins. So again, so what are you implying? Fat off at the mouth, you better back it up. That's all I'm saying. I don't mind it, but you better back it up. Okay, so I agree with you the this part that you're saying where there has been an increasing amount of shit talking and there also is going to be increased coverage on this stuff because the second that somebody says something, it's going to get spurned into a story. This is just the area that we're now in. This is the reason why we're talking about this is because the amount of talking that's come out of this program, it's the most out of anybody in the past couple of years. This isn't anything new, by the way. Okay, lame yeah, shit yeah. talking isn't anything new. What makes it a bigger story is because of what they did in the portal that he so uh, apparently loathes. But I don't fault Princely for making this statement because if I look at the two different sides of this, Florida was dog shit last year. They were a mess. Defensively, they have all this defensive line talent. None of it has been actualized. Departures, defensive line coach fired. And a, having to fire a defensive line coach is a reflection of the head coach being unable to hire a good coaching staff. That goes on Billy Napier. On the other side of things, Old Miss has been the growing and improving program that has a defensive coordinator that has been successful at multiple locations. So frankly, I trust, and I'm, I'm not faulting Austin Armstrong, this still comes down to, again, I will always direct the blame at Billy Napier and his lack of ability to prepare his team to succeed, develop, and win. My point is, is I still stand with Princely on the statement that he's making because the results weren't there for Florida, and I'd be willing to bet that he's probably going to have a really good season this year for, for Ole Miss. So you mean to tell me that he had 10 sacks in the SEC just off of raw athletic ability? Yeah, that's capably possible. We've seen guys do it. Jadavion Clowney did that. Jadavion Clowney had, had sack production as just pure raw talent. Okay, fine. But there's still schematics that's brought into this. Yeah, but I think that if we really digest the tape, I, I think that there's a lot of proof of he has the sack production. But a really good example is Wink Martindale, for some stupid reason with the Giants, kept dropping Kayvon Thibodeau into coverage because – these defensive coordinators sometimes try to get way too cute, and I'm sure they've that that's what Harold Perkins. They've done it with multiple people. I, I understand. I understand where you're going. The problem I, I have with that specific thing is I know of multiple games last year, Georgia, LSU, uh, who, Florida State. Joe, he, he gets absolutely wrecked in the in the run game. That but, so there there comes that's a, a that's a concern with him obviously and that's probably that's an area him. of improvement that needs to happen and I also would argue though that him loafing on film understandably we can question a, a player's motivation and their commitment to the to the game but I think that we still need to turn the blame here on the coaching staff that's been around him for long enough that can't motivate the kid. He already sounds more motivated here at Ole Miss. I've never heard seen him make these comments when he was at Florida. He hadn't played a game at Ole Miss. Shit goes starts going crazy at Ole Miss. Are you a thousand fair. percent confident in your bones that he doesn't turn on them? It, That's it, fair. It, quite honestly, it's a it's an awful comment by him. In my in my yeah, honestly, he shouldn't be saying any of this. He shouldn't make any of these comments. He just needs to go play. Right, and when and specifically, Joe, it feels like you're spurned. Right, it feels like you that you're a little bit. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, petty. Yeah, the, 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 I mean, this was deliberate. You you don't bring up again. I, I'm not a fan of coaches making comments of old players. I'm not a fan of players making comments on old coaches. I think it's it, it's only going to question your integrity and your commitment and all of those things. Uh, and your ability to build and establish relationships. But I still side with him. I think that aside from him making the comment, I, I, I know that one side has been successful and one side has not been successful. 
We can all have differences, but going out there and throwing your coach under the bus when they have had nothing but glowing things to say about you is pretty nuts. I, I will finish with this on this on this topic or on okay. this part, okay? Again, I just want to emphasize Ole Miss better be in the playoff, buddy. They better be in the playoff because I got to tell you, man – if you're not, then Lane's got some serious questions that he has to answer. Now, I mean, obviously injury can play into that and you give a, give somebody grace, okay? But here's the statistic. You ready? Uh-huh. I got something for you. Joe, in the last decade, there have only been three teams to have seasons that have won back-to-back 10-win game or have 10 wins in a season in the SEC. Do you want to know who they are? Who? Sure, you can guess. Teams that have had back-to-back 10-win seasons, Georgia and Alabama. There are three teams in the SEC that have had 10 wins in back-to-back seasons. Georgia, Alabama, and not LSU. Yeah, LSU. Oh, it is? Well, I mean, they just had it this year. So my my point is, it ain't as easy as you think it is, especially in this league. So you – and Joe – I like the kid. He's going to be very good in sack production. He's going to get one-on-ones that he didn't really get a lot last year, too, because of Walter Nolan. I think the kid's going to have a really good year. But I just don't like the pettiness that comes from this. If it were a bitter, bigger program, we would probably look, frown upon it. And, if and Joe, if what if he came from Bama? You know, like, what if he came from a different school? By the way, just throwing this out there, Nick Saban did hire Austin Armstrong as his inside linebackers coach. What do you That's think a good he point. thought of him? Okay, so you cannot tell me that Lane Kiffin, I mean, uh, uh, that Nick Saban, who, by the way, made him the center point of his defensive staff hires before he went to Florida, you cannot convince me that he just told you, go out there and cover. I don't think that it was him, though. I, I think that the the clear indication so your here, your line coach, your outside linebackers coach, when you go in team drills, is not telling you. It's the DC that is correcting you. It's not position it, coaches. Yeah, no, I I I understand that that it is the that the DC is going to have influence over that, but I think that it's pretty telling that Sean Spencer was fired, despite at one point um, had been classified as a really good defensive line coach. Um, so I, I think it's more on him than it is on Armstrong. I think it's pretty easy to figure out who the culprit is here for, for not doing an effective job of preparing him. Mike Elko f- fully disagrees with you there. Uh-huh. Uh, I was wrong. It's not the last decade. It's the last five years that those three teams, are the only teams in the sec that have had back to back 10 win seasons. Joe, let's do this. Let's get to a quick break. We got to talk about the NCAA again, barf. But Fun. we got to because Charlie Baker does make a good point about the NCAA and prop bets. We talk about that next. Let's talk about our good friends over at Home Field Apparel. Stay with us. Rafino and Joe Show is brought to you by Home Field Apparel, which is the best, without a doubt, premium collegiate apparel brand that is out there. They have over 150 different colleges that you can choose from, whether you're an Illinois fan or a Rutgers fan. Maybe you're an LSU fan like Blake, or maybe you're an Alabama fan. Whatever it is, even Idaho, they have so many different designs for so many different football programs that I can guarantee you're going to find some great stuff to help root for your favorite team. I've already gotten my Notre Dame stuff. Blake has his LSU stuff. Make sure you head on over to homefieldapparel.com to check out your team's collection of clothing apparel that they have on the website. And when you do so, when you check out, make sure you use promo code Rafino Joe to get 15% off your order. That is R U F F I N O Rafino Joe. Head on over to homefieldapparel.com and get your college gear today. The first person that should hear that sound in this year's draft had his it won't be. It won't be though. Might not be, but it should be. All right, I'm just going to say it. I know you told me not to bring it up. I don't like a guy with pink fingernails and a pink phone case and lip gloss. Joe, the fingernails, his mom's business, whatever, the phone, whatever. He's got a little small little pink purse on keychains. 
And here's the big thing for me. Can I tell you what the big thing is for me? Mm-hmm. He's wearing lip gloss. Honestly, honestly, Blake, I've actually come around on Caleb Williams. I've actually come around on the fact that everyone gets so because I I I, I honestly can I I can understand and sympathize with how everyone just gets pissed off at him for no matter what he does. Now I'm not a Heisman Trophy winning quarterback. I never sports. said I was pissed off at him. No, no, but you are. You're bringing up all these things about him. It's bothering you. It bothers you. And I think that that aspect of things makes me kind of in on him. I kind of respect that everyone he bothers so many people for doing nothing. But he does make it about him. And, I don't and, disagree with that part of things. And, that and does kind of bother me. It's can I tell you the truth? The yeah. lip gloss, the fun, in all seriousness, I, I have a lot of fun with this. Let me be real for a minute. The phone, the lip gloss, the nails. If he wants to do that, that's his own prerogative. I do not care. You do what I'm serious. Do what it, it, anybody. But he is phone. very me centric. If we're like if we're looking past it, yeah, I get those concerns. That is a problem. You're a quarterback, you're leading your team. You need to be team first. You can't be asking for ownership of a franchise. You can't. Correct. All right, let's get to this before we wrap it up. Joe, NCAA uh, President Charlie Baker, well, the first thing that he didn't do was remember to file an appeal uh, against Tennessee and Virginia, even though I don't think that they wanted to, to fight that case and continue yeah. the legal battle. Tennessee, Virginia, congratulations, you won your battle. But he came up with an interesting proposal today that, Joe, I got to uh, I, I got to admit, I don't know if I disagree with him on that betting companies should take away prop bets so that the integrity of the game would clean up from a betting perspective. Joe, I got to admit, I don't think that he's wrong. The problem with what he said, even though that he provided data in saying it, I do really believe that it's just not right and fair for the fans nor the companies. You can't tell a, a betting company what they can and can't bet against. I mean, you maybe you can put federal regulations on it, maybe, but that's another five years down the line before we get anything done on a regulation because betting companies, most of them lobbyists, are going to make sure that the, uh, something that is their high – Joe, more people bet on prop bets than they do on actual games. So that's the yeah. massive part of their, uh, of their sports gambling. They're not going to go down without a fight. Well, so – okay, so you just brought up – something that is going to get overlooked with anyone who covers this. I think the amount of lobbying that has come from these betting entities that has gotten it legalized in all these states, your home state was the first one. They are, they have so much control. So, so much control. And and I would even argue, I don't think a lot of these other professional leagues are going to speak out and say much because of the fact that their money is in the pockets of those commissioners. They they are influencing some of their decision making, and we're seeing it with the increased level of sponsorship across all of these leagues. Right. I think like my biggest piece with all this is they should be banned. First of all, they should be banned. the The prop bet thing. There's too much of an opportunity for for players in games to influence them. It sucks as a fan, and as somebody who I place you you don't want to know what the most of my bets are. Most of my bets Our are prop bet. They're strikeout bets on baseball. I don't. I don't bet that much on NFL games. I bet a lot of college football game outcomes, but I, I bet a million strikeout and hit over unders. That's my primary bet, and it sucks that that's going to happen. But there's too much influence that can happen with guys throwing games that are low level players that are looking to make a little bit of extra money that are trying to, you know, sell information to to outsiders or or betting fiends that are trying to influence the outcomes of games that stuff's problematic that's where the biggest issue comes into play i think it's a lot harder to shave points and do all that stuff and to do it effectively i would just like to see the commissioners of all these other leagues to not allow the the betting companies to influence them and back charlie baker in this statement they're not going to do it can I tell Probably you why? Not. Well, Joe, your home state of New Jersey was the first state to legalize on phone game uh, uh, gambling, the sports gambling on the phone. I, I went and looked at this, Joe. Do you want to know what your home state generated just in year one in right. revenue? The state one point two 
billion, with a B, billion dollars for the state of New Jersey. Now, I'm sure a lot of that had to do with people from New York going across the bridge, whatever. Isn't it a bridge? And don't you get a don't you go across a bridge to get to Jersey? Yes, a tunnel. You're talking about from Philly to, or you're talking about New York to New Jersey? New York. Yeah, to New no, York. no, never mind. Just to, what was your point? Do you go <laughs> over a bridge to get to, from Queens to Jersey or something? You can't get from Queens to Jersey. Okay, I don't it's, know New York, even though I got a Mickey Mantle book back here. By the way, when are you going to bring me to New York? I I love the Yankees. I'm not even in New York. You go to New York. What are you, you talking Yan- about? You know, one thing that me and you would probably agree on is the New York Yankees. Um, by the way, did you see my Mickey Mantle book? The last, the last I, hero. I didn't. I I just believe, Joe. For me, that there's too much money involved in this. Prop bets being the biggest thing for gambling companies, the lobbying that would go in behind it. Here's the truth. It's not going to work. And it's another thing that the NCAA is going to get wrong in because legally, I don't think that they're going to be able to do it. Maybe they can do it in college and just do it in professional ranks. But Joe, here's the problem that I have with this. He's right, but he just is, he's just can't, he's not going to be able to get this through. Right, like I, I, it's I like back- everything that he says. It's everything that he brings up. It sucks. Like he's got ideas, but they're not actionable. And, and can I be on? I, can I just be a little honest? Mm-hmm. I might have been wrong about Charlie Baker. Oh, you're coming around on him. Welcome. I to the don't team. know if I. I don't know if I'm not. I mean, Joe, what was he? What was he really doing against Tennessee? I don't want to get into it, but just because we brought it up in the beginning, they they didn't go. See, normally what the NCAA would have done in the past, you know what they would have done? They would have fought Tennessee on this. He's like, guys, we can't win it. Why are we going to spend the legal uh, the money on legal to fight a case that we can't win? But here's the bottom line, though, Joe. He wasn't wrong. He hmm. knew it was pay for play. He was trying to do the right thing. I just don't know if I'm not coming around on him a little. Well, I mean, you were the the biggest supporter I of the, the NCAA uh, when we when we had this uh, the whole debate about Tennessee and everything. You were pro NCAA, so I'm surprised no, I'm that uh, through NCAA. all of this, I'm not pro NCAA. I'm pro enforcement that that benefits everybody having an equal playing field. Okay. Okay. I, I mean, I. I do think, and I said this from the jump, or actually not from the jump, but after he had kind of made a couple of statements, I do think that Charlie Baker has far more capability to make changes than Mark Emmerich did. Mark, Mark Emmerich was a clown. I think Baker can actually has ideas that work. I just don't know if he's ever going to get the support necessary to actually influence and make these changes. I don't think he will either. By the way, it's snowing in New York right now. That doesn't surprise me. In March? Oh, yeah. It snows all the time in, in – uh, uh, it's 48 right now. Well, our good now. friend Chesa Boucher is up in Albany, New York right now. Oh, uh, all, uh, Albany's definitely – definitely snowing up there. Yeah, no, it snows, uh, especially upstate. It snows in March. New Jersey, we got snow all the time in March. There's, new, there's northern New York, the, the woody part of New York. Y'all got some deer out there? You can take me. Uh, I, that's that's like hours away. From, I think there are, but that's hours away from where I'm from. I'm closer to the wooded part of uh, Pennsylvania, the Poconos, than I am from the the wooded part of New York. You know what would it be if me and you went hunting in the state of New Jersey? I don't think you can. I don't think there's anywhere to do that. Oh, well, there is, but you know what it would be like. You remember what? the Sopranos when? Uh, uh, the dude with uh, Paulie and Chris got out in the woods and they had to sit in a van. They're eating ketchup packets because they're about to freeze their balls off. That would be those two Italians out there trying to hunt the state of New Jersey. Of course. Of course. How, I mean, I don't hunt, so I've never done that before. I wouldn't even know what it's like. Edition. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We will see you. Uh, we will not be live on Sunday. It's Easter. Yeah, we got to figure that out. Okay. We'll figure it <laughs> out. We'll figure it out. We'll see you Sunday or Monday. Who knows? Until then, Mm -hmm. y'all have a good one. Peace.